One of my favorite topics here, what exactly is an atomic orbital and how does it actually relate to what electrons are doing when they actually orbit an atom? Now, some of the first uh, models of atoms would have a nucleus, I'm gonna pretend this is a nucleus, and let's say a single electron orbiting. The first models kind of like implied that the electron physically orbits around the atom. That's the cartoons that we still use today, you know, all the time in textbooks. So it might orbit here, it might orbit maybe farther away, it might orbit even farther away. And generally, the farther away it's orbiting, the higher the energy, uh, the energy level of that electron. That's kind of the traditional way of thinking about it. If you stick to that model in your mind, it has some applications and it is useful sometimes, but basically electrons do not behave that way in real atoms. Quantum theory tells us that they do not exist as little balls that actually orbit. One of the first things we actually learned about atoms is that when the electrons orbit, they cannot orbit just anywhere at any radius from the, uh, from the center there, like a planet can, right? Um, in other words, they might be able to orbit, let's say, right here, or at this distance, and maybe like right here at this distance, but maybe never in between. And when an electron jumps between orbits instantaneously like this, then it can either emit or absorb a photon depending on which way it's jumping. So the energy difference governs the energy of the photon either absorbed or released. So this picture has some, some utility, uh, thinking about it like this, especially with jumping electrons and photons. But you need to wash it out of your mind if you want to really understand atomic orbitals, because electrons behave more like waves than anything else. Let me take a little detour with you here, but it's very important. Imagine a guitar string attached on two solid posts like this, and you pluck it with the lowest energy possible. It's going to go up and down, up and down like this, and that would be the lowest energy mode. But if you pluck it with more energy, with more force, for lack of a better word, you can set up a vibration where you have a node at the center, and as you give it more and more energy, the standing waves can have more nodes and more, you know, high regions there. And so as you, you can basically excite different modes of oscillation with higher energies in a vibrating string like that. When you solve the Schrodinger equation for what the electron is doing with its wave function, it turns out that there are many, uh, many additional wave structures that can be excited in three dimensions. So you have all of these lobed structures, these spherical structures, and so on. And when these lobed structures overlap with adjacent atoms, you can get a chemical bond. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.